Hello class 6 students, how are you all? I am Monica Bajaj, your science teacher and today we will discuss about your chapter number 8, Getting to know plants. Plants are the part of the world around us. They are found in different places like in soil and water bodies, such as lakes, rivers, ponds and oceans. Without plants, life is not possible on earth. There is a large variety of plants on earth. Scientists have estimated that there are over 3 lakh species of plants. Out of these, some plants are big and some are small. Classification of plants. Most plants are classified on the basis of their size and structure into the following three types. Herb. These are plants which are usually short and may not have many branches. They have soft and flexible stem. The color of the stem is green. Cabbage, tulsi and coriander are some example of herbs. Second one is shrubs. Some plants have the stem branches out near the base of the stem. The stem is hard but not very thick. Such plants are called shrubs. Rose, jasmine, lemon, henna, cotton etc. are examples of shrubs. See these pictures. Next is trees. Trees are woody plants with a strong with a strong trunk and deep growing roots they live for many years every year they bear flowers fruits and seeds these have a single main stem which grows for some distance above the ground before giving out branches mango neem etc are the example of trees next is creepers the plants such as pumpkin and watermelon are creepers these plants just creep on the ground and spread out. Climbers. The plants such as pea and grapevine are climbers, which have weak stem that cannot stand erect. They take support of other trees to climb. Now, on the basis of life cycle. On the basis of life cycle, plants are classified into following three classes. First one is annual plant. The plant whose life cycle from seed germination to fruit formation is complete in one season are called annual plants. These are generally herbs. For example, wheat, paddy, mustard, moong, gram, petunia and balsam are annual plants. Biennial plants. The plant's whole life cycle requires two seasons for completion are called biennial plants. For example, carrot, radish, Potato, turnip, etc. are biennial plants. These are generally herbs and rarely shrubs. Biennial plants have only vegetative parts, leaf, stem, during the first season and they produce flowers and fruits in the second season. Perennial plants. The plants whose life cycle runs for more than two seasons are called perennial plants. For example, trees of neem, guava, jamun, babul, palm etc are the examples of perennial plants. Parts of a plant. A plant has certain parts with their specified functions. Roots, stems, leaves and flowers. The non green underground part of the plant is called the root system. The green part of the plant above the ground is called shoot system which consists of stem, leaves, flowers and fruits. Root system. The part of the plant which remain and grows underground is called root system. Roots always grow towards moisture and gravity and grow away from the sunlight. Types of root. There are two types of roots, tap root and fibrous root. First one is tap root. Tap root system. When a seed germinates, a root emerges from the seed. This is called main root. From this root, branches emerge. The main root grows deep into the soil. Such a root system is seen in plants like bean, mango and pea. Now second one is fibrous root system. In plants like maize, a cluster of roots arises from the base of the stem. The root form first dies. The cluster of the root is thin and fibrous. There is no main root. Fibrous root spread out in the soil giving support to the plant. Wheat, maize, millet etc. have this type of root system. Characteristics of a root. The root is a part of a plant which usually grows below the ground. 
it generally grows from the reticle of the embryo of seed it grow always toward moisture and gravity it grows away from sunlight it does not have nodes internodes flowers fruits and seeds it fixes the plants firmly in the soil it absorb water and mineral salt from the soil let's see an activity aim of the activity to show that the roots anger the plant in soil material required for the activity a pot garden soil gram seed and water procedure of the activity take a pot filled with garden soil place a few gram seed in it water it daily for about a week after a week when seeds grow try to pull out the seedlings from the pot how much force did you need to pull it out keep the pot for another week the seedlings grow into small plants now try to pull a plant from the pot how much force did you need to pull the plants out this time observation of activity more force is needed to pull out the plant second time this is because the root of the grown up plant is bigger than the root of the seedlings and has grown deep in the pot conclusion of the activity it is concluded that roots anchor the plants firmly in the soil let's see an another activity aim of the activity to show that roots absorb water material required a reddish glass water red color and a knife procedure of the activity take a reddish place it in a glass containing red colored water leave the setup for a day next day take the reddish out and cut it lengthwise observation of the activity the red color has spread throughout the reddish and red color tubes appear extended all along the length of the reddish conclusion the red color shows the passage of water through the reddish so it can be concluded that roots absorb water let's see another activity aim to show that roots bind soil particles together materials required two baskets polythene hardened soil bean seeds and water procedure of activity take two basket and spread polythene in them now fill the basket with garden soil sow some seeds of bean in the basket a and leave the basket b bare water them daily for one week till the seed germinate and seedlings grow into small plants now place both the basket inclined under the tap let the water fall over them with same force observation very less soil is washed away from the basket a while much soil is washed away from the basket b conclusion of the activity the result clearly indicate that root bind the soil particles together modification of roots in certain plants the structure of their roots is changed in a natural way to perform additional functions such roots are called modified roots see this picture some types of modified roots are described below modified roots store food modified roots such as potato sweet potato carrot radish have swollen roots because of food stored by them the plant uses this food when needed modified roots provide addition support to the plant plant like sugarcane or maize are tall in these plants new roots grow downwards from main stem or branches they grow towards the soil and act as a pillar to support the plant they are known as prop roots in some big plants like banyan tree and indian rubber plant roots arise from the horizontal branches of the stem and grow towards the soil on touching the soil they penetrate into it and act as a pillar these prop roots support the heavy branches of the tree now let's discuss about shoot system the portion of a plant above the ground is called shoot system the shoot system of plant consists of main stem its branches leaves flowers and fruits stem the stem of a plant is a link between the roots and the crown of leaves and flowers it is the main support of a plant it has nodes from which leaves and buds come out the region between the two nodes is called inner node in trees 
stem is called the trunk. The trunk in most tree is covered with an outer covering called bark. It protects the inner parts of the trunk. Functions of the stem. It provides support to the different parts of the plant and helps the plants to stand upright. It carries the food prepared by the leaves to different parts of the plant. It carries water and nutrients from the roots to different parts of the plant. Stems of some plants like ginger and onion grow underground. These stems store food made by the leaves. Modification of stem. Stems of certain plants are modified to perform some special functions. Some of the modification of the stem with their function are as follows. First, for storage of food. In certain plants, stem grows underground and stores the food made by leaves. Ginger, potato and onion are modified stems. Second, to prepare food. Stems of the plants like cactus become leaf-like, flattened and green and prepared food for the plant. Third, for support. Stems of some climbers like grapes and passion flower are modified to form special structures called tendrils. These help the climber plants like which have been stems attach themselves to other for the support. Fourth, for reproduction. Stems of some plants such as potato, onion and ginger are modified to store food and reproduce. Next is leaf. The leaf is a thin, flat, broad structure arising from a stem or a branch. Leaves always grow at a node. The entire set of leaves of a plant is known as the foliage. Parts of leaf. A leaf is born on the stem at a node. The point of attachment of the leaf at the node is called the leaf base. It usually has a stalk called petiole and a pair of very small leaves at a base of the petiole called the stipules. The large surface of the leaf blade or lamina is well adopted to observe sunlight and carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. The end of a lamina joining the petiole is called the leaf base. It has a thick midrib in the center. See this picture of leaf. On either side of the midrib, thin veins branch out. These veins in turn divided and subdivided to form a fine network of veinlets, which keeps the leaf in expanded form. The veins transport water and mineral to the leaf and take away food made by leaves. Types of leaves. The design made by veins in a leaf is called leaf venation. In some plants, midrib branches out to form a network of veins on both sides. Such a venation is called reticular venation. If the veins are parallel to each other, the venation is called parallel venation. Functions of leaves. Leaves make food for plants by a process called photosynthesis. Leaves require water and carbon dioxide from air. In the presence of sunlight and a green pigment present in the leaves, chlorophyll, food is prepared by leaves. Oxygen is given out in this process. This is the equation of this process. Carbon dioxide CO2 and water H2O gives food and oxygen O2 in the presence of sunlight. Plants breathe with the help of their leaves. Tiny pores are called stomata, are present on the surface of the leaves. The exchange of gases take place through stomata. This is the picture of a stomata. Plants give out extra water from the leaves in the form of vapor through stomata. This process of loss of water in vapor formed through the leaves is called transpiration. Transpiration help in keeping the leaves cool. In some cases, leaves are modified to store food as in onion or reduced to spines to reduce water loss as in cactus or modified to trap insect as in pitcher plant. Modification of leaf. Like roots and stems, leaves of certain plants are also modified to perform some special functions. Some of these modifications are as follows. First, for support. In some plants like pea plant or gloriosa, leaves are partially or fully modified into leaf tendrils, which help the plant climb a support. Second, for protection. 
In some plants like cacti, pineapple, etc., the leaves are modified into sharp, pointed structure called spines. These spines protect the plant from grazing animals. Flowers and fruits. Flowers are the most colorful and attractive part of the plant. It is also the reproductive part of a plant. It appears on the plants after it attains maturity or is fully grown. Parts of a flower. The main parts of a flower are as follows. First, petiole and thalamus. Sepals or calyx. Petals or corolla. Stamens or andrisium. Carpel, portals or gynosium. First, Pedicle and thalamus. The cylindrical portion by which a flower is attached to the stem is called the stalk or the pedicle. In some flowers, the pedicle swells up or flattens to bear the other parts of the flower. This is called thalamus. The rest of the part of a flower are arranged in circle are called hoards. Second is sepals or calyx. It is the outermost green color ring. They protect the flower in the bud state. It manufactures food and supply it to the other floral part. Third is corolla or petal. These are usually bright in color, scented and attract insects which is in turn help in pollination. Petal is also called corolla. Fourth is stamens or androsium. It is male reproductive organ. The yellow knoll is called the anther. And the stalk is called the filament. The anther and the filament are connected by a connective tissue. Each anther lobe has two pollen sacs, which are filled with pollen grains. These pollen grains take part in reproduction. Fifth one is carpel, pistil, or gynosium. The innermost wall of a flower consists of the female reproductive part. This is also called gynosium. It consists of three distinctive parts, namely the stigma, style, and ovary. The lower swollen base form the ovary, which bears the ovules. Each ovule is a female gamete. The ovary extends into a cylindrical long stalk called the style, which ends into a flat sticky portion called the stigma. Let's see an activity. Aim of the activity. To study the structure of a stamen. Procedure of the activity. Collect different types of flowers, remove sepals and petals. Study the shape and size of stamen. Take a stamen and tap it on a glass light. Observation. You can see some fine particles on the slide. Conclusion of the activity. These are pollen grains. They are the main gametes of plants. Let's see an another activity. Aim of the activity to study the structure of an ovary. Procedure Take a complete flower and remove its sepals, petals and stamens. Place a pistol on a slide and cut the ovary longitudinally, lengthwise as shown in figure. Draw its label diagram, take another flower, take out the ovary and give a transverse cut. Use a hand lens to study the detailed structure of ovary. That is the number and attachment of ovules. The number of chambers in ovary draw its label diagram. Observation and conclusion. Ovules are round structure. They are attached to a tissue called placenta. They contain female gametes. Functions of flowers. Reproduction. A flower is the organ of reproduction in place and leads to the formation of fruits and seeds. Sources of food A. Nectar from flower is used as a food by insects. B. Cloves, long, are obtained from the dried, unopened flower birds of clove plant. Ornamental value Flowers are grown in gardens, residences and along the roadsides. They add color to the surroundings and purify the environment with their fragrance. B. Cut flowers are used for bouquet and interior decoration. Pollination Flowers are developed into fruits and form seeds by the process of pollination. The transfer of pollen grains from anther of a stamen to the stigma of the pistil is called pollination. After pollination, 
ovules changes into seeds and ovary grows and develops into fruit fruits are the seeds bearing structure of the flowering plant a fruit is actually a ripened ovary and seeds are ripened ovule of flower let's quick revise readers digest plants are found in different places like in soil and in water bodies such as lakes rivers ponds and oceans plants are of different size and structure as herbs shrubs trees creepers and climbers our plants have certain parts with their specified functions roots stems leaves flowers the parts of the plant which remain and grows underground is called the root system the stem of a plant is in a link between the roots and the crown of the leaves and flowers flower is the most colorful and attractive part of a plant okay student we have done our chapter now it's time to take your leave bye bye thank you